since taking over as the minister responsible for health, a major headache I have had has been how to support the National Ambulance Service to improve on its emergency response capabilities. I inherited a service that had personnel, but no adequate number of vehicles to be relied upon to respond to emergencies in the country with a high degree of capability and efficiency. We all do know that people's lives often depend on the quick reaction and competent care of emergency medical technicians and paramedics. Incidents as varied as automobile accidents, heart attacks, slips and falls, even childbirth, and gunshot, gunshot wounds require immediate medical attention. Emergency medical technicians and paramedics provide these vital services as they care for and transport the sick or injured to a medical facility. These vital functions cannot be performed without ambulances. Mr. President, thank you and the Vice President for your personal commitment in ensuring that this laudable project became a success. Mr. President, I want to assure you that tonight I will sleep. And I'll beg for permission to be late a little bit tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, since after the deployment of the drones, or even during the deployment of the drones, I took a lot of bashing from Parliament to radio stations to TV stations to several other media platforms. Now we don't have ambulances, and we are deploying drones to fly blood and essential medicines. And I kept on telling people and the nation that the president is committing to deliver on his promises, and he will so do. Sir President, let me thank you. You have justified my explanation.